Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Training Group, and welcome to Monday. It's the dog days of summer getting ready to set in here. May's almost over. Already. You know, we're, we're five months gone. Almost the year's almost half over fiscally. We're almost nine months through the first fiscal, uh, well, the fiscal year 2021 for the federal government. I mean, wow, man, I don't know where to start. What a crazy, crazy weekend. Uh, shout out to 50-year-old Phil Mickelson uh, winning the Masters. I'll tell you, I watched it. I wanted to see what old guys could do. Uh, I'm sure he loaded up on the CBD, too, after that. Uh, wow, speaking of which. Is it, think about what I'm going to, and I know some of you have heard it. We've been saying this on, on this station for a long, long time. Talking about where did COVID come from? And were we involved? And by we, I'm primarily talking about Fauci. Over the weekend, and actually it's come into today now, it looks most likely that COVID came out of that lab in Wuhan. And people were getting banned from YouTube, in Twitter, in Facebook for having the courage to say it outright banned and this is this is what we're up against this is why supporting uh the the roar of the rockies 1360 is so important we didn't ban any of these people listen no offense but i know a lot of people I, you know but now that i own a radio station it's amazing what people will tell you all of the majors I mean all of them got muzzled. Every single one of them. And if you step out of line, you're going to be out of work. Over the weekend, we had heard reports that Fauci has been backpedaling about the origins of COVID. And of course, we will tell you, listen, it's easy. It's easy. To show the proof that we, through, well, you know, third parties, however you want to say, we're funding a lot of this research. And he knew it. And, of course, had been out there, banned everything. You know, remember, President Trump, one of the things that got him banned from Twitter was by saying that it came out of Wuhan. I don't know if you guys remember uh, Gottlieb. He was the head doctor that started all the lockdowns. And he was on CNBC, Scott Gottlieb, uh, day in and day out and telling everybody about all of this stuff. He was actually uh, out there today saying that people a year ago said this probably came from nature. It's really unlikely it came from the lab. This was a year ago. Maybe a year ago, that kind of statement made a lot of sense because we wanted that to be the most likely scenario. But we haven't found the true source of the virus. And it's not because of a lack of trying. And he went on to say, it is unlikely we'll ever know for sure. We know. We know. And I just find it very, very interesting, and 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 I, and I bring it up because you know we, as we sit here and we watch uh, all of the things that we can say or can't say, people being banned for, uh, you know, what they want to say is conspiratory thinking, and it's not. But that's why it's so important to to support the radio station. Listen, they're dying breeds. I'm hearing all kinds of things about another massive rounds 
of, of layoffs and consolidations coming to the major radio networks. And here's the problem. Most of us don't even know. Don't even know. Like you, you may listen. Hey, well, I liked when I when I like to listen to music. I like to listen to this station. And when I listen, uh, when I want to hear about sports, I, I listen to this station. And when I want to hear about politics, I, I I listen to this station. And if I want to know uh, more about God and spirituality, I listen to that station. And you're thinking you're listening to four different stations, four different companies. You're not. A lot of the time, they're all owned by the same company. In a lot of markets, you can't get what we're doing here. Very, very difficult to do. Uh, so continue to support us. Continue to support uh, all of the advertisers. And man, do we got a lot of new ones coming. Uh, we've already added a bunch. Uh, over the weekend, we got even more people coming in. So... Uh, continue to support them, continue to get the CBD products from us, and, and be vigilant with that CBD. Listen, don't be consistent. I promise if you're consistent, it's going to help you. When we get back, now now that, uh, you know, the, the, the word is out on it, and again, listen, they're going to come back and say, oh, we'll just never know, and all that stuff about where where the virus came from and all of that. Same things happening to us financially as well. It's the exact same thing. We're going to talk about that next. 800-951-0592. It's all the same. It's all the same. News reports now that Wuhan, uh, the Wuhan lab workers, they were all in the hospital when COVID came out. We've known for a long time. There's no doubt in my mind. But they don't want the truth. It's not what they want. I wish it was what they wanted. They want what's best for them. And, and think about what, what it's all caused. And, and why would we be even experimenting with this kind of stuff anyway? But we do. It, this, is, this has been going on. For a long time. This isn't the first time they've unleashed some type of biological weapon on, on the citizenry. It's not going to be the last. And we continue to allow it. And, and uh, if you speak the truth, you just get banned. And, and the same thing's happen, happening to us financially. I mean, think about this. There's no inflation, or it's transitory, or don't worry. Oh no, we're we're not thinking of a digital dollar. Oh no, no, of course not. We don't need to do that. And and even if we did, it would just be to make things better for you. See, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And I'm going to say this to you right now, all of you listening. Uh, gold's going a lot higher. A lot higher. And either you're preparing or you're not. But you're just kidding yourself. Right? It, it was from a bat. Then it was from some crazy animal I never heard of. And then, and then you know, here we come all this time later. Okay, well, maybe it did, you know, a bit. We're not going to tell you we did it. Maybe we, we gave them the money to do it. Who knows? Just j Here's the headlines for today. You know, every day we talk about another item. How about Goldman Sachs? You think they know what's happening? Do you? You think they're in on the meeting? And when it comes to finances, oh, you know they are. Well, they just said get ready. $60, $70 oil, not enough. They're saying that crude oil, before the end of the summer, will be $80 a barrel or more. So think about this. At about $60, it's like 3 bucks. So wherever, and again, this is Arizona, right? Right. We're about 310 to 325 here. 
Add another 20 bucks a barrel to crude oil. Uh, that'll put it at four. And if four's not enough, they'll make it be five. Remember now, everything they want to get rid of is, is going to go out of sight. How about meat prices? Have you been to the grocery store lately? And again, think about it. Crude oil, bad. Natural gas, bad, right? Green energy, good. Let's make it really, really expensive. Americans' refrigerators could be beat. I don't mean to lie. Be get hit the hardest, and especially those evil doers that eat meat. They say that adults are spending more and more money on groceries, uh, even since the beginning of the year. Red meat was cited most often as the highest price followed closely behind by chicken. By the way, I did ask. I went and saw my buddy. Asked him about the, the, the case of chicken wings. And he said it's gotten even higher. So think about this. $88 to $160. Now 188, and then I told him he didn't even hear the third Sanderson uh, ran out of chicken wings yet. Food inflation has been climbing for months. Well, they say inching up for months. It's a whole lot more than inching. Driven by soaring commodity costs, costlier transportations, challenging uh, securing the labor, rising demand. Does that sound transitory? Think about it. Cost is up everywhere. It's not just the the product itself. Cost more to get the product shipped both ways, right? Hey, we gotta get stuff shipped to the to the plant. Cost more. We gotta ship the stuff out of the plant. Cost more. The actual products we're shipping in cost more. The cost for labor, even more. Demand even higher. All of these things adding to the cost. They say that inflation, they've got pockets of inflation. Without having corresponding wage growth. Yet wages just went up the fastest in years. It's not enough. It's putting consumers in a really tough spot. They're saying that people are starting to buy less food, including less meat. That's what they want. Hey, listen, we can all just eat plants. They said that the, you know, well, okay, here you go. Here's over. And it's inf inf uh, infecting the minorities the most. So there's another one. They always like to throw that in there uh, as well. It affects everybody. But I just find it interesting that all of a sudden now, the cost of of all the meats are through the roof. Now they're saying crude oil is going to get even more expensive. Right? We got shortages everywhere, ship shortages everywhere. Have you have you booked a flight lately? Remember how cheap they got? That was part of the reason why inflation was so low. Airlines and hotels, rates are climbing as travelers are returning. They said even the cost of a road trip has gotten significantly more expensive. It's the highest price since 2014. We know this is what we're seeing too. Think about this. This is the same pattern all the other commodities followed. First it was lumber. It's the highest since 2014. Then the highest since 2011. Then the highest ever. Uh, copper, iron ore, steel, corn, wheat, soybeans. Now airfares and travel, the highest since 2014. I'm sure I'll be back in two or three weeks. It'll be the highest since 2011. And then it'll be the highest of all time. Domestic airfares up 10% since April 1st. Ooh, that's a jump. 
Don't worry, there's no inflation. They said that they're talking about uh, the, the return to the economy and that the discounts have gone away and hotel rates, uh, like they used Cancun, Mexico, $205 a night. Last year, $45. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything's going to be a okay. 800 9510592. Be ready. And I know they're not going to come out. They're not going to tell you they did it. They're not going to tell you it's their fault. Right? It was just naturally occurring and that we are trying to help everybody. When in actuality, they were the ones doing it. You know, go out to allamericangold.com. It's Monday. Allamericangold.com today. Got John Williams on there. And you know, John Williams, why I like him, he does one thing. And he does it really, really well. Because they would like to tell us how inflation isn't that bad. Remember, we've spent 15 years now. I mean, almost 20 years with hardly any inflation at all. Just ask them. They'll tell you. Didn't used to be that way. How did it change? Matter of fact, you'll even hear them try to convince everybody that we had a new money theory out there. That maybe the textbooks had it all wrong. And that printing trillions of dollars out of thin air didn't cause inflation. It had to be the answer. Right? Had to be. Because look at, I mean, think about it. 2000, the debt was barely $5 trillion. Now it's almost 30 But we've hardly had any inflation. Well, until now. So, huh. I wonder why that happened. You know what? I figured it out. I've got it. We were wrong. And there's a modern money theory that we never considered. Which basically says we can print pretty much all we want. Free money for everybody. Of course, if that was the case, why not give everyone a million dollars? Well, it'd be simple, because then uh, if you did, Right, rents would be five hundred thousand dollars a month. Right, right. Going to Walmart would cost a couple million dollars. Well, a couple hundred thousand. But why I love John Williams is he's been around a long time. I know he's one of those old guys again that they hate. Well, don't they hate the old guys? See. He's actually kept track of inflation. Going all the way back to how they used to track it. Come to find out, it has, there's no modern money theory. All as they did was they changed the rules. Then they changed them to deliberately hide the truth. Sound familiar? Isn't that what they did in, in the Wuhan lab? You think all of this breaking news over the last 48 hours is a shock? You think our God, we just found out about it this weekend? Right? Fauci all of a sudden just got handed something like, oh, well, maybe it did come from there. Come on. So John Williams, 
He goes through and it takes him, listen, it's the only thing you can do because it's so convoluted. But he actually goes back to how we used to calculate inflation. And he took a look at the indexes. And it specifically was saying the last time U.S. consumer prices where, and this is the numbers they use. Remember, headline 4.2. This was last month's CPI. Core 3. Which is 50% higher than what they said. Was 1978 to 1982. But here's the funny thing. John Williams said that, that's even misleading. When we get back, we're going to look and if we were tracking inflation the way we did in the 70s and 80s, where would it be today? 800 So think about this. House prices up the most on record. Even more than the, than the housing bubble. More than the hyperinflation of the 70s. But Williams goes back. And he said, taking out all the things that the Federal Reserve has done. And remember why they do it, to keep their system afloat. They're not, do you think they're lying about inflation? And lying's the word. Because they care about us? No. They own the cheerleading networks right, that continually gaslight us day in and day out. I mean, I can't even believe these guys can read the CPI report with a straight face. So here's what Williams said. He said, you know, I went back and I tracked what was happening. And he says the Federal Reserve has painted itself into a very tight corner because they've been lying the whole time. They've been misrepresenting the facts. Think about COVID now. Now they're going to change uh, the, the mathematical formula on the vaccinations to make them appear more effective than what they are. Right? I mean, it, it, they do it all the time. And he says, there's only two choices left. Inflation or implosion. And I think we're going to get both. That's my fear. Because we're going to get the inflation. We've already got the inflation. And then when they raise the rates, that's the implosion. And this is why I said, you want the gold before the inflation runs. And then you want the gold after the implosion so you can take advantage of the deflation that's going to follow. But he went out and said, the system needs liquidity. Right? Freshly created dollars to function. Without liquidity, you would see more of an economic implosion than what you've already seen. The Fed needs to keep the banking system afloat. Think about that. Remember, and I keep telling you, right? They need to have these higher prices. They have to. I mean, just the derivatives on these banks' balance sheet that we never hear about. 50, 60, 70, 80 trillion dollars. It also means... We're not recovering as quickly. The Fed needs to keep the banking system afloat. They want to keep the economy afloat. All that requires a tremendous influx of liquidity. So he said of the two choices, I think we're going to have a combination of both of them. Just like I said, inflation first and then what I'll call the hyperinflationary collapse. So 
What did he say inflation is? Remember, they said 4.2. That was their their big, horrible number, 4.2%. Now, according to John Williams, if you take away all of the Fed's manipulation of the data and just go back to how we used to track inflation because that's really the only thing that changed how were they able to create all these trillions of dollars and not have inflation they didn't that's the simple answer they didn't but John Williams says Right now, the inflation rate is over 11%. That's if we were to calculate it before the 1980s when the government started using accounting gimmicks to make inflation look less than what it really is. So think about this. What do you think would happen? If the central bank came out and said inflation was 11%. Now he says that's the number. And listen, he's been doing this for decades. And I only bring this up because I want to ask you all a simple question. Because I know all of you know that it's more than 4.2. I do. A 10-year note is yielding 1.65% being deliberately held down by the bankers. I want to ask you, who in their right mind would willingly lose, in real terms, 10% of their money by buying a 10-year note? Because right now, according to John Williams, that's about what you're losing. Who would do that? The answer is nobody. Now you've got bankers, right? And you've got the debt pushers. Listen, they're all pretending to buy it and, and pretending that it's wonderful. But here's the reality. Sooner or later, we are going to have to deal with the consequences of these actions. COVID, no COVID, either way, we've been living far beyond our means. And the only reason that they've been able to hide it is they lie about the number. Right? Even today, they still say car prices have are, are essentially unchanged in 25 years. Housing, which is up 20% year over year. They said two. (laughs) This is what's coming. And and remember, all the underlying debts. Who's bought all these mortgages? Who owns them all? You know who owns them all? The Fed. They're buying $40 billion of mortgage-backed securities every month. You know why? Because the banks aren't dumb enough. The banks are like, there's no way, and you know what, that we want to hold these mortgages. Right? I mean, think about it. The fasting selling houses in the country, million-dollar homes. If you go back and you look at what was happening in the 70s, this this is worse. And now we're having shortages of just about everything. Victor Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800 592 Patriot Radio News Hour. Man, 11? 12? How, how bad? Is it really going to get? But this is why you're putting gold away. This is why you're putting silver away. They're not going to come out and say it. Right? They're not going to come out and say it. Matter of fact, 
They'd rather ban people than have them know the truth. Because let's face it, if you knew the truth, you'd already be preparing. John Williams is telling you there's only two choices. And really, the mo- the most logical one is both. Right? We're, we're, we've already started the inflationary cycle. So they asked him, how long until it peaks? He says that we won't see inflation peak until next year. And then the crash to come quick. And it's funny, and, I, and a lot of people are saying this now, that they, they think the crash is going to be quick. Like this whole cycle, you know, think about the 70s. This hyperinflationary cycle went on for for a multitude of years. And that part, I, I, I don't know. I, I I think the Fed, they're stuck in this thing. They're going to ride it out. All of a sudden, we're hearing more and more and more about this digital currency, which just tells you what. Hey, this thing's coming, right? It, it's happening quickly. I mean, last week, they were saying four years, four to five years. This morning, we heard from Lael Bernard. Now, for those of you, I've used her name before. She is a member of the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay, so she is she is one of the most important people outside of Jay Powell and Janet Yellen. And the reason being is a lot of people think this woman's next. Okay, she's going to be the next head of the central bank. She pressed the case on Monday for a digital dollar saying that a cryptocurrency backed by the central bank would provide a variety of benefits. See, there's no downfall, it's just benefits. Just like it benefits us to not tell you about inflation, just like it benefited us. Listen, we had to lie about inflation. We had to. Because if we didn't, Right, the whole thing was going to collapse. We've said it for years. This is a house of cards. You know it is. I mean, think about all the unfunded liabilities. Think about, think about just Social Security all by itself. She's saying that by having this central bank digital currency, they could be providing financial services to nearly one in five Americans considered unbanked. Who the heck is unbanked? Yes, uh, I'm unbanked because I'm homeless. I don't have any money. I'm unbanked. See, now now you don't have to worry about being unbanked. We we got you. She also said safety, and this is the real reason, of a Fed backed system. See, we like to say safety. Because they always they always love to use those words. Right? Safety, secure. How about FDIC insurance? Right? And it's backed by us. Yeah. Feel good about that. Of course I already told you, you already know if you've listened to this show, you know what that means, right? We're just unsecured creditors to the bank. And uh, I think, what was it, last week, someone way smarter than me actually did the math for all the insured deposits. And I, I, don't, I don't even know how to get that number, right? How do you find all the insured deposits? But someone did it. And they said the FDIC has about a set and a half for every insured deposit. Just saying. But what could possibly go wrong? So you're going to have safety, improvements in efficiency, and cross-border payments. I didn't know there was a problem with cross-border payments. right? I guess it'll be easier for people to send the illegals to send their money back home. I don't know. And obviously, what are they talking about? You know, someone's buying, we're buying crude oil from the Saudis. We're buying all the Chinese crap. And 
transactions between people in different countries. There you go. That's for your illegals out there. Bernard said the pandemic has strengthened the need for a system in which a broad swath of public has as, uh, access to well-regulated digital money. See, it's COVID's fault. The Federal Reserve remains committed to ensuring that the public has access to safe, reliable, and a secure means of payments. Oh, and by the way, including cash, she said. Yeah, watch how that goes away. Watch how that goes away. As part of this commitment, we must explore and try to anticipate the extent to which households and businesses need preferences and may migrate further to digital payments over time. Essentially what that means, we got to have the ability to send people even more money. Page our radio news hour, final segment coming up. Don't be fooled. Nobody wants bonds. This is the problem. Lael Bernard, Jay Powell, Janet Yellen, they already know. They already know. The crash is coming, and this is going to be our pitch to save it. And here's going to be the great thing about it. We can all send everybody that gets wiped out money. Because that's really what you just said right there. And this is going to be a wipeout that we've never seen before. I mean, I wasn't alive during the Great Depression, but it's going to be like that. And everybody that has money, you're going to take the haircut. That's why I said, have it in gold. Then you avoid the haircut. Today, got a really interesting item. I got to do it. I, I, it's too good of a deal not to pass up. We've got 75. Mint State 64 $20 St. Gaudens. So these are graded, you know, in, in the coin world, MS60 to MS70. There are no perfects, right? Like MS67 is about as high as it gets. These are MS64 Saints. They're $2,275. That's a hundred dollars more than in, than our regular twenty dollar saint, which is twenty one seventy five. So twenty two seventy five. That's actually five dollars less. Well, just under five dollars, four dollars and change less than an almost uncirculated twenty dollar saint. This is huge, huge value. When you think about. You know, really, there's not really a very many any specimens out, uh, outside of an MS-67, and those are few and far between. This is MS-64. This is really high up the grading scales. That's like 10 grades higher than uh, what what uh, an ungraded regular $20 saint would be. So you're paying about 10 bucks a grade. That's huge. That's great value. Uh, got 75 of them. I'd take a run at these. I think these are going to have... Uh, huge returns on it, and, and just think about you know when we're we're looking at a hyperinflated, and then the Fed's got to react, got to raise rates, crashes the whole economy. Well, then then we're gonna have the wipeout. They're gonna come with the digital currency. Got to send. I don't even know. I mean, we're already sending money to like 130 million Americans. How many more can we send it to? Put them away. 800 951 Zero five nine two MS sixty four Saints twenty two hundred and seventy five bucks. Uh, gold's up eight eighteen eighty five. I'm just going to tell you chart wise. Gold closes above eighteen ninety, and it's going right to nineteen fifty. Just saying. So right now eighteen eighty five. Silver's up as well. Silver's up about forty cents. Uh, $27.85. Uh, the Dow is up 200 points. I, I don't know on, on what, who knows. Uh, but the Dow is up for now. Uh, crude oil up another $2.30. 
back above $66 a barrel. Uh, Lael Bernard still talking, saying that the central bank is paying very close attention to the Chinese digital currency. Uh, get ready. The digital money is on its way. 800 951 0592. God bless everybody. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>